Reading through the existing literature is typically the first step in a research project. We read through the existing literature for two reasons. First, professional researchers want to keep themselves updated on what's going on in the field and to make sure that what they study hasn't been studied before. So you want to know what's going on before you invest resources in the study. Uh, for a master's student, the role of finding the new literature or the relevant literature is to understand the topics and understand the concepts and the terms that are used when studying the topic, the phenomena of their choice. And also you need to be able to review the literature to write the literature review part of your master's thesis. Let's take a look at how I use different tools for doing literature review. The first thing that you should not do is this. So uh, don't assume that you can use generative AI to uh, produce literature reviews. We might be tempted to ask the, the AI tool to explain some of the more recent literature, on, for example, on entrepreneur orientation. Just give us more recent, ex, uh, give us recent examples and explain it to us. The problem is that these tools are not designed for this purpose. So it gives us a list of seven new articles, but if you take a look at in detail, none of these articles actually exist. So it comes up with uh, non-existing articles. The reason why it does so is that these are prediction machines. They are not knowledge machines. So it comes up what a, a good response to the question might look like, but it doesn't necessarily come up with a valid response to the question. The tools, uh, these AI tools are trained using data that doesn't cover the most recent literature. So it just uh, generates something to feel satisfied to the user query. This might be useful for you. And nevertheless, because there are some concepts here. So if you put the name of the article into Google Scholar without the quotation marks, you can find something useful. But there are better ways to use generative AI for coming up with Google Scholar searches. And uh, instead of asking the generative AI tool for uh, article suggestions, you can ask it to um, explain uh, what kind of search strings would you like, uh, should I use? So if I'm interested in, in entrepreneurship as a master's student and I want to do a thesis, it's important to uh, provide context in your prompt. Uh, give me some queries that I should start with. And then it gives us some, some of these queries. Some of them are useful, like entrepreneur mindset is actually a concept that we use. And then uh, entrepreneur finance is more like a research area. So that wouldn't be a concept, but these are somewhat useful. So as a starting point, ask Claude or ChatGPT to, to tell you what to do with Google Scholar. Then another uh, way that these tools are useful is that you can ask them to explain specific concepts to you. Like you can ask, for example, that you can, uh, you, you can tell it that you're focusing on international entrepreneurship and uh, ask for central concepts here. And born global, that's a central concept. Liability of foreignness, that's a central concept. Cross-cultural entrepreneurship is a central concept and so on. So it can tell you these, these concepts and maybe some search strings that you can use to find uh, information about these concepts. Then there is uh, international entrepreneur orientation explanation. International entrepreneur orientation is not a very common concept. I'm sure someone has used that term in the literature, but I wouldn't uh, list that some of the may as one of the main concepts in this literature. So it also gives you false positives. So anything that these tools give you are just ideas that you need to check. And then you need to go and take these search queries to Google Scholar. So Google Scholar is the most uh, usable, at least in my opinion, and most widely used academic search engine. There are databases and that store articles where you can search directly, but they are limited in that they only provide your results from the database, from the articles that they store. Google Scholar captures pretty much everything that there is. Then there are more curated databases like ISI Web of Science, but they might be harder to access and they might be not as easy to use as Google Scholar. So Google Scholar is a good starting point from the literature to the literature. And if you are just want to learn something, then maybe going through the first 10 pages uh, might be useful. If you go to page 50 or some of the, uh, the, the, the search results down on the list, then you will start finding something that is not as relevant or maybe master thesis or some other work that might not be trustworthy. So 
but the, the top hits, first 10, 20, 30, 50, are typically of pretty high quality. Then once you have identified an article that you think is relevant to your study, for example, uh, this uh, empirical research on orientation looks very relevant, but it's a bit old, so it's 2013. What we can do to find some more relevant research is to click this cited by. So that gives us the list of articles that Google knows cites this article. And then you can see the search the citing articles. Often there is a, a seminal article in a topic or like a recent literature review that pretty much any high quality study will cite. So once you find that kind of like an anchor point, then you can use this uh, cited by feature to get to the most recent research. You can also search, limit your search uh, of the most recent uh, re uh, of this cited by to, for example, finding articles that cite this article that have been published in the last three years. If, on the other hand, you find a good article and you find, want to find other similar articles that would be kind of like the, the backbone of your literature review, like the theoretical basis, then uh, this can be useful, the related articles. So it, it finds you articles that are often cited together. So this tends to find articles of similar age. So if you have a paper from the 80s that you want to cite and you want to know if there's any other seminar, uh, seminar work uh, from the 80s, then you might be using these relevant articles. So I normally tend to use uh, cited by because I know the concepts in my field, but I want to know like what is the most recent stuff. And the most recent things you can always find with this cited by feature. It's better to uh, look for a similar article and then cite it by than to type in a search query, uh, type your concept and then look for the last year because this uh, cited by gives you, in my experience, more better quality results. Then there's another interesting and, and important thing here, it is this button here. So this is my view. I use Safari and Mac, but whether, whichever browser you use or whichever operating system, it works the same. So somewhere close to the address bar, there is this button to save things to Zotero. Whenever I find something that I want to read, uh, I don't open the PDF typically from here, but instead I click on the button to save it to Zotero and then I read it from Zotero and that guarantees that I have access to the PDF later on and I also have a log of all the things that I've read. So if I remember that I read an interesting article two weeks ago, I can just go to my Zotero database and see what I added to that database two years ago, uh, two, two weeks ago. <clears throat> then there's also advanced search in Google Scholar and the advanced search allows you to limit to specific authors or to specific journals. For example, we could look for articles in Journal of Business Venturing and uh, then that gives us results. So you can see that you can accomplish the same by, by typing source, then a, a semicolon, a semicolon and then a colon and then Journal of Business Venturing. You can do author colon, author's name to search for works of specific authors. This is also something that I do all the time. I particularly search for works of a specific author. There's also another way that you can look for works by a specific author and it's clicking on the author's name here. So most uh, professor researchers have profiles in Google Scholar and if the uh, <coughs> researcher has a Google Scholar profile, then their name appears as a link. And then when you click on that link, you can see that uh, what that person has published. So this is Johan Wicklund, he is the editor-in-chief at this time in 2014 of Entrepreneurship Theory and Practice. And, uh, we can see his publications and if he was the central figure in, for example, research in entrepreneur orientation, then uh, you, might be look, you might want to look at what has he published recently. So you can find recent articles by looking at who is the, uh, who, which researchers are active in the field, what have they published uh, in the last year or two. And the other way to find recent research is to uh, look at seminal articles and who is citing these seminal articles now. There's another useful way of limiting your search results. So Google Scholar has the strength, but also the weakness that it, it covers a broad range of journals and it covers uh, doctoral dissertations, master thesis, it's pretty much everything. But you often want to focus on just looking at the top journals. There's this go to studies.com and it allows it basically first you pick what is your, your discipline. Uh, we would pick management most of the time, and then you can pick specific journals. So there's the journal ranking here, 
I don't know exactly what it's based, but these A-star journals are pretty much the highest ranking in any ranking that I'm aware of, and these A journals are, are also pretty good journals. So you pick which journals you want to search, and then uh, it goes to uh, Google Scholar and searches specifically for these journals. So what is the advantage of using this tool over using the advanced search? It is that it's much easier to find research or specify a search query using this technique than typing the journal name. And this also uses some kind of journal IDs. So you can have much, much more journals that you limit to. For example, if you want to search across 10 different journals, then typing the journal names in the Google Scholar advanced search would not work because the search box takes like 200 or something characters. It just doesn't take as many. And here you can just click the journals and it just works. <clears throat> All right, to summarize, here are the recommendations on how to use uh, uh, Google Scholar by Generative AI. My workflow for using Google Scholar, if I want to have uh, familiarize myself with an entirely new topic, I would first ask the Generative AI what are the central concepts, recommend me some search queries, and then I would do a bit of reading. I would try to find review articles. So review articles are articles that cover a broad range of articles on a topic. And if you find a good review article or if you find a good doctoral dissertation that which typically contain lots of literature reviews, that is an excellent starting point. And the review article will tell you the concepts and some of the central findings. Once you have identified a good review article, then you can use the cited by uh, to get more recent works, or you can identify based on the review article who are the central authors, and then go and look at the profiles of those authors to find the most recent high quality work in the area. And there is one part here that I don't agree with, uh, with uh, Claude, and it is this point number 10. I never use the bookmark feature in Google Scholar. Instead, I use my reference management software. So whenever I find something that I want to get back to, I use it, I store it in Zotero, but you can store it in any other uh, uh, citation management software. Google Scholar has one disadvantage, and it is that we don't really know <clears throat> how the articles are collected. So we don't know what Google Scholar covers and what it doesn't cover because it's not documented. We also don't know how it ranks. And if you want to do a, a more systematic review, like if you want to be sure that you cover, uh, let's say, the top 10 entrepreneurial journals in the last 10 years for a systematic review of the literature, then uh, we would use uh, a, a website called ISR Web of Science. You need to be on the university network to access this. It's a bit more compl complex to use than Google Scholar because you can specify various things, but it gives you a lot more, lots more tools to actually analyze those search results. So for normal use, like if I just want to update myself on a literature, Google Scholar is the way to go. But if I want to do a systematic literature review, for example, if I want to see how many articles there are published in a particular topic or do any kind of this like analy more analytical literature review, then I would go for ISR Web of Science. Then there is also a third category and um, there is online services. These are just coming. So I haven't used this myself, but we have another video about Elicit. And then there's Research Rabbit. These are our tools that use AI to summarize articles, find and summarize articles for you. And I know that quite a few master's students have used this and find them helpful, but I just don't have much experience on them myself yet. But they are worth trying for sure.